Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be covering specifically Scythe neutral game. I plan to make more guides on Scythe about its combo game, but I haven't really seen any guides specifically about Scythe neutral. Scythe has uh, a lot of combos and strings, right? And most people focus on that when thinking about Scythe and don't focus on neutral game. If you don't want neutral gamers, it's when both opponents, opponents, both people aren't in disadvantage or advantage. So they are not not one of them is being hit or in a string not recovering to stage, they're both on stage, moving around and trying to find an opening on the other player. Scythe's got a very different neutral than most of the weapons because a lot of its grounded attacks are very punishable. End light, after you throw it, is quite punishable. Down light is relatively punishable but has a lot of range and a big distance and this one will be used a lot. And side light has extremely short range. So first I'm going to cover when we should use these moves and what they do. So. End light is a sweeping hit which comes out in front of you and hits slight hits stacked but only if uh, they are like actually stacked they can't be slightly behind you and other, overall has a small hitbox but it hits extremely high so can be used as an anti-air when you dash back and this is ha this is handy to know because if someone's diagonally approaching you and you dash back and do this you have a lot of range and space in between you and it actually serves as a quite strong anti on the weapon and a very underrated tool. People tend to use it on the ground to pick up and then yeah it can be used to start combos but most of Scythe's moves can be used to start combos. Downlight is a move with a lot of range and uh, no, no hitbox in between you so it has a dead zone. As you can see the hitbox is there and there is not a hitbox on me or anywhere near me and someone can be in that space so it requires you to space the attack properly if i if i attack here it won't connect and even I, as you can see i'm not connecting those moves but if i space it perfectly i can connect from a good distance away and that makes the move very very strong so downlight will be used a lot in neutral game maybe from a grav cancel as well depending on who your opponent is. Certain weapons won't be able to deal with this, especially short range weapons. And if you grab cancel it, you can hit grounded opponents from in the air because of the way the hitbox is. I will demonstrate that now. And hitting someone with the grab cancel of this move can be very useful because you can lead it straight into recovery. That is going more into combo game, but I will slide some of that in, the useful tips that you need to know to just improve so side light has extremely short range but it's quite fast and very easy to hit its hitbox doesn't hit stacked but it lasts a decently long time out in front of you and overall has quite low recovery you can either hit them up or hit them away and in neutral game it depends on what percent they are so if someone is very low percent you can choose to use side light for a big dodge punish because it puts them in the air they'll have to use an air dodge and that that takes longer to come back if you do it from the side they'll get a grounded dodge where you won't be able to get as good punish but the move itself does more damage doing 15 versus the only 11 and if they are high health i always recommend or high percentage i always recommend going for a side light off stage just hitting them because having that advantage and pressure that scythe has because scythe has good off stage gameplay Having that pressure of them being off stage means you can get a lot of follow-ups. You can look for maybe a jump dare or just look for a gimp in general. And that, uh, I recommend always going for the active input one that hits far away. Now I've covered all the grounded moves, I'm going to cover the aerials. So Nair is a very quick anti-air, which is diagonally out in front of you and uh, hits very far. This move probably has the furthest diagonal range, the further diagonal range than any down air, other than exceptions like bow down air, but most likely will win out if they're diagonally above you. You also have quite good aerial drift while in this move, and, and I think it doesn't even stop your aerial drift at all actually, meaning that you can reverse this move to good success, and you can also use it backwards. If someone's approaching you, you can dash back and jump and nah and it is relatively safe. You could also turn around reverse there, so if someone's here, 
I can turn around reverse now and catch them if they're trying to approach me. This will give up stage control doing this, but it will be extremely safe. It does hit grounded, which is one thing to note if you get a if you get the perfect hitbox. So it can be used in that way if you have no other option. Its speed and active input allows you to keep your opponent off stage and is very good to use it off stage. So if I set the bot to jump and I hit them with a nair at very late percents, it could kill at like very, very late percents. But because this hits up, you have less chance of a gimp. Where if you turn them around, even though it has very low force, even from center stage, they're off stage and you can get a chance for a gimp. Now at low percents is also one dodge frame into set if they have no dodge or you just can read them. If I do now set perfectly, it can be one dodge frame. There you go. Siphon so usual game revolves around dare because a lot of people play floaty and then go do dare. Uh, so dare is a diagonal hitting move which hits quite far and is a great combo starter. A great combo starter on side. A lot of players will play floaty and then fish for dare and just wait because it's so strong and safe. You can get a lot of moves off dare as it lands them, it normally bounces them off the ground, meaning they have to use an air dodge, but you have access to all your grounded moves. And it means that you can ab you can aggress with this move, which is dash jump. Dash jump dare is a a move that's used a lot as it puts your character's hitbox in the air meaning that if they try and throw any grounded attacks you'll most likely jump over them and evade them this can be countered extremely well by weapons with good anti-airs but in general your a lot of your neutral game will revolve around either waiting for a dare if you're more of a passive player or dash jumping with a dare or you can fake dash jump dare like you can you could dash jump and then if you, so if you keep doing dash jump down over and over again you can fake it by going to ground and then use it as just an option to scare your opponent because if i dash jump at an opponent they might reaction dodge if i've kept doing down air but instead i can go grounded and do a sideline now all of these options are obviously just hypothetical and won't work every single time but a lot of the time you're going to be one of doing the same thing and practicing your neutral game and knowing what moves to use is important like Sair, Sair in neutral is not the best move it's better in advantage like when I, if I hit someone with a Nair I can Sair them if I hit someone with a reverse Dare I can Sair them especially in offstage situations this is very good move but in neutral it's not a good move because it's hitbox I think lasts only like a couple of frames even it's hitbox only lasts, only lasts one, two, three, four, five, six frames, which is very short. And although it's quick, that short amount of frames compared to something like Dare, with, even with a diagonal hitbox, and Dare is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Dare is also six frames. But the hitbox shifting means that you only have a hitbox for a couple frames. So if you look at this bottom hitbox, which is exactly. Uh, Align with the character that only lasts two frames and then the up cleaving hitbox only lasts three frames and this means that it's very difficult to land and you can get through people as well because again it has a dead zone like scythe has a lot of moves with dead zones you, someone can be stacked and it won't hit them where is a move like dare even if they last the same length dare hits all the way up to my character and even a bit stacked meaning that it can be used more offensively and more in neutral game. But Sair can't be used like that, but can be used as a combo ender, a combo finisher, because it also has force. And now, recovery and ground pound are the two last moves I have to cover. Recovery uh, is quite good neutral, as you can dash jump fast for it if you read that they're gonna uh, do a double jump. And then off that, because it spikes downwards you can get follow-ups but overall this move isn't that good in neutral game because its hitbox doesn't come out for a while see as you can see i start this move all the way wait i think i started all the way back here i started this move on this frame as you can see my character's moving 
and then it doesn't get the hitbox out till all the way up here. So you can have to land a hard read on someone to get this to land. And most likely, if you want to do something like that, I could just use like a Mordex Ensig. And it kind of covers the same area, but Mordex Ensig is quicker and safer. And your character might have an Ensig like this or not. But overall, recovery is very difficult to use in neutral and is mostly using combos and advantage thing. Again, just because a move can't be used in neutral doesn't make it a bad move. But more on more on end light before I cover ground pound. Uh, dash and dash and light is another option you have if the player is very jumpy. So dare won't catch a jump because it is down. But if a player is jumpy, dash and light works like a charm, and dash jump GC and light can also work if you keep doing dare and they keep jumping it because you'll for you'll force them to jump by doing a dash jump, and then you you can hit them with that. And it also it's grounded, meaning that if they don't jump, it's a good tool. Now I'm going to cover ground pound, which is actually for a ground pound, can be used in neutral quite a lot. You can, in theory, like aggress with this move. You don't really see many players do it, but it does have good drift. As you can see, I can, if I hold my ground pound, I stop moving, if I hold it down, and I don't progress any more forward. If I tap it, I keep going. Meaning that you have a mix up there. If they want to punish you, they have to pick which option they think you're going to do. So if they think I'm going to go behind them, then their attack won't hit if I just stop. But if they think I'm going to stop, then I can go over them. And this is also surprisingly quick and can be used. And if you really want to mix up your scythe game, make it like no other, use this, use this attack because you won't really see many scythe players using it. But it does set them up in a good position for combos and it does have that 50 50 mix up which would mean that you can uh you can evade punishes quite easily even if it does have pretty high recovery frames. but off stage obviously this is an amazing tool has a big big disjoint far move it's quick if you reverse it your character has a slightly different hitbox and if you if you and stops and if you hit it uh you can often lead to a gimp so overall this move is also not a bad landing tool because of the disjoint and it is quite quick so if you're above someone you can ground pound this is not the best option and you could just dare but if they are playing below you like directly below you and dares not catching them, you know you can throw this out now thank you for watching this is a bit of a weird video i haven't really covered neutral game for weapons though. i have combo guys and stuff but i forget that neutral game is a one of the most important parts and if you have an extremely strong neutral you'll win every game because if they can't land the first hit on you because your neutral is so good how are they going to combo you anyway thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one if you're up to here please subscribe and put what videos you'd like to see me do in the future i just hit 2k and i can't thank any of you enough for the support i've been getting and i do really appreciate it i also stream on twitch and have a discord both of them in the description See you guys in the next one.